Heavenly Father, how we thank you for what you have done. We want to affirm that you are a loving God. You are a mighty God, a compassionate God, a merciful God. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your compassion upon everyone. And we pray that day after day and month after month, all the rest of our lives, this compassion will never stop in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray everything you have for your people will receive before we go in Jesus' name. And we pray that nobody attending this program here and any other place will go empty-handed. Fill your people with joy from heaven in Jesus' name. Confirm your miracle of woman, everyone. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Joel chapter 2. In Joel chapter 2, verse 32. Joel 2, verse 32. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. Mark that word, whosoever. God is no respecter of persons. He loves us. You are his favorite. And he says, whosoever, if you will call on the name of the Lord, there will be deliverance, total deliverance in your life in Jesus' name. And then it goes on to say, for in Mount Zion, and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Lord has said. Notice that. As the Lord has said. What Satan says in your life will not take hold. What enemies say in your life will not materialize. Whatever will happen in your life will be as the Lord has said. He delivered the children of Israel as the Lord has said. He protected Israel as the Lord has said. He brought them out as the Lord has said. He brought them into the land of promise as the Lord has said. He'll bring you out, out of trouble, out of tribulation, out of affliction, out of the furnace of fire of the kings of this world as the Lord has said. He'll bring you into the land of promise. And in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. The Lord has called you for a purpose. And that purpose will be fulfilled in Jesus' name. Obadiah chapter 1. Obadiah, having only one chapter, verse 17. But upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance. Upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance. As you think about the Old Testament and the New Testament, you come to the New Testament and it says now the church stands for Zion. And we now come to Zion where you are now. This is that Zion where your deliverance is and your deliverance will be yours in Jesus' name. Upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance and there shall be holiness and the house of Jacob the people of God shall possess their possession. You'll possess your possession. I said you'll possess your possession. In 2 Kings chapter 13, many times we do not know how much we have to do. And how connected we are to the deliverance the Lord is bringing away. Many times, many people think it only depends on the Lord. Whatever deliverance they want me to have, the height, the breadth, the length, the depth of deliverance he wants for me. But the Lord is saying, much depends on us. He has given us all things. And whatever it is, you are able to claim. Whatever it is, you say, this territory is mine. Nothing will hinder you from your possession in Jesus' name. Look at this illustration in 2 Kings chapter 13, verse 17. And he said, Open the window eastward. And he opened it. Then Elisha said, Shoot. And he shot. And he said, The arrow of the Lord's deliverance. 
the arrow of deliverance from Syria. For thou shalt smite the Syrians in Ephek, till thou have consumed them. Give me a good amen there. Those things that wanted to consume you before, destroy you before, oppress you before, those things, you will destroy them in Jesus' name. Verse 18, and he said, Take the arrows, and he took them. And he said unto the king of Israel, Smite upon the ground. And he smote thrice and stayed. The man of God said, Smite upon the ground. And he smote three times and he stopped. When the commandment comes to you, pray. And you pray for three things and you stop. Demand. And you demand for three things and you stop. And then he says, Claim. And you claim three things and you stop. Here the man of God said, Smite the ground with the arrows. And then he smote three times and he stopped. And the man of God was angry, wrath, indignant with him. And said, Thou shouldest have smitten five or six times. Then art thou smitten Syria till thou art consumed it altogether. Whereas now thou shalt smite Syria but thrice, only three times. He was the one that limited his blessing. You will not limit your blessing. You will not limit your possession. You will not limit your inheritance. Everything the Lord has for you, for your soul, for your spirit, for your body, for your family, for your business, for your career, for your profession, anything concerning you, there will be no limitation in your life in Jesus' name. You will possess. And whatever it is, the Lord has promised. That promise of a yes and amen in your life in Jesus' name. I want to speak to you as we round up deliverance and freedom for every captive. Deliverance and freedom for every captive. Three things we're going to look at. Number one, threefold freedom. Threefold freedom. Threefold freedom. Number two, triumphant freedom. What makes you a conqueror? An overcomer. Triumphant. Triumphant freedom. Number three, transformational freedom. There's a kind of freedom that comes. And it doesn't just leave you the way you were. It transforms you. It turns you around. And you will say, once I was this, but now I am over here. Things are different. Everything will become different in your life in Jesus' name. Transformational freedom. Number one, threefold freedom through the sun. S-O-N. Threefold freedom through the sun. Number two, triumphant freedom by the spirit. Triumphant freedom by the spirit. Number three, transformational freedom in the scripture. Transformational freedom in the scripture. Come back to number one again. Number one, threefold freedom through the son, the truth. The son, the truth. He is the truth. Truth personified. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. And this word became flesh and dwelt among us. And he is the one that said, I am the truth. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. And this lively truth, this liberating truth, he is the one that gives us a threefold freedom. Number one, threefold freedom through the Son, the truth. Number two, triumphant freedom by the spirit of truth. The spirit of truth. There is a spirit of error. Bondage comes through the spirit of error. Affliction comes through the spirit of error. But the spirit of truth, it tells us there is triumphant freedom by the spirit of truth. 
Number three, transformational freedom in the scripture of truth. Transformational freedom in the scripture of truth. Number one, tell me number one out loud. Say that again. Say it like a preacher. Threefold freedom through the Son, the truth. We're looking at John chapter 8. John chapter 8, and I'm reading here from verse 30. John chapter 8, reading from verse 30. Here he tells us in verse 30, as he spake these words, many believed on him. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, if ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. The gauge of your freedom will be measured by the level of what you know. The level of your freedom will be measured by how much of the truth, truth personified that you know. In verse 36, if the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. That freedom has come already. It will be yours in all ramifications in Jesus' name. Luke chapter 4. In Luke chapter 4 verse 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. That the Son of God writes there. Jesus Christ, our Lord, our King, our Savior, our Redeemer. When he said upon me. That's the Lord. That's the Son. The Son of God. The truth. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted and to preach deliverance to the captives. To preach deliverance, to proclaim deliverance, to provide deliverance to the captives and the recovering of sight to the blind. And to search at liberty. The Lord is setting you at liberty today. To set at liberty them that are bruised. Look at verse 21. Verse 21. He began to say unto them, This day is day scripture fulfilled in your ears. That's a fulfillment upon your life today. A fulfillment in your soul today. A fulfillment in your spirit today. A fulfillment in your family today. A fulfillment in everything that concerns you today. In Jesus' name. He said, this day, this day, mark it down. This day is day scripture on deliverance and dominion and the fulfillment of the promise of God. This day is the scripture fulfilled in your ears. We're looking at Luke chapter 13. In Luke chapter 13, deliverance, deliverance, deliverance through the Son. Luke chapter 13, verse 11. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years. I was bowed together and could in no way, in no wise lift up herself. Personal effort failed. All the personal trips to this place and that other place, everything failed traditional ways all that failed modern ways all that failed all the experience that other people around her had to help and lift up herself everything failed where everything has failed in your life the son of god is coming to your life that situation right now he will not fail in your life in jesus name and when jesus saw her the lord is seeing you there where you are he sees your predicament, he sees your limitation, he sees the paralysis, he sees the blindness, he sees all the yoke, he sees all the oppression, he sees all the affliction. And the Lord is coming your way right now as he sees your condition. He will deliver you in Jesus' name. And when Jesus saw her, he called her unto him and said, Woman, woman, thou art loose from thine infirmity. This moment, you are loosed in Jesus' name. And he laid his hands on her. And immediately, 
she was made straight and glorified God. And the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation because that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day and said unto the people, There are six days in which men ought to work in them, therefore come and be healed, and not on the Sabbath day. That's a hypocrite tried there sitting in the synagogue. If Jesus did it during the week, they will say it is by Beelzebub. If he did it on the Sabbath day, they will say don't do it on Sabbath day. Come during the week. So, so if you come during the week, they are going to find something negative to say. If it comes on the Sabbath day, they find something negative to say. I pray that these hypocrites will not limit your blessing in Jesus' name. You're not listening to them anymore. Religious, uh, false, quacks, people, people that don't have any good intention about your life. I pray they'll not have any hold upon you anymore in Jesus' name. They say, are you going there? Are you going to that place? And they had something negative to say. They had something negative to say about Jesus, but there was nothing negative about Jesus. Everything about Jesus is powerful and positive and practical. Everything about where you are now is positive and practical and powerful. All that the enemy wants to do when they say those negative things you are hearing is so that they will hinder you. They will not hinder you in Jesus' name. Then the Lord answered and said, Thou hypocrite, thou dost not each of you on the Sabbath day lose his ox and his, or his ass from the stall and lead him away to water in and ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound, lo, these eighteen years be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath day and when he had said these things all his adversaries were ashamed all our adversaries will be ashamed in Jesus name all our adversaries will be silenced in Jesus name all who oppose your deliverance and they oppose your blessing and they oppose the outpouring of the promised blessing of God upon your life they will be ashamed and silenced in Jesus name and all the people rejoice for all the glorious things that were done by him. We're going to rejoice with you. I said we we'll rejoice with you. I said it's a threefold freedom. A threefold freedom. Number one, freedom from sin. Number two, freedom from sickness. Number three, freedom from Satan. From sin. From sickness, from Satan, you are free. As you step out of this place, you will recognize, you realize, this threefold freedom, they all come together. It's a bundle that cannot be broken. It is something so complete and so full, the Lord is giving you at this time. And none of them will be missing in your deliverance and freedom in Jesus' name. Threefold freedom. Number one, freedom from sin. You are free. I said you are free. I said you are free. You know, Satan will say, and Satan is a liar. Satan will say, you are not free. Of course you are free. When a liar says something is negative, you know that thing is positive. When a liar says you are not free, you know that you are free. When a liar says you are bound, you know that the bondage is gone. When a liar says you are captive, you know that you are more than a conqueror. The liar says you are not free, but Jesus Christ, truth personified, he says you are free. Who are you going to believe? I said, who are you going to believe? Jesus or Satan? Who are you going to believe? I believe my Lord, he is truth personified. He never told a lie. He never deceived anybody. Jesus says you are free and you are free in Jesus' name. Freedom from sin. Matthew chapter 1 verse 21. Matthew chapter 1 verse 21. And she shall bring forth a son. And thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save. He shall deliver. He shall set his people free from their sins. He has set you free. I said he has set you free. I said he has set you free. We're looking at Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. Freedom from sin. Romans chapter 6. I'm reading here from verse 6. Romans chapter 6. We're looking at verse 6. Praise the Lord you are free. 
I said, praise the Lord, you're free. That old temptation will come again. You'll say, oh, you came late. I went for deliverance this uh, last uh, weekend, and that place, threefold freedom, is now mine. I said, threefold freedom is now mine. And all those things, they'll be under my feet, under your feet, in Jesus' name. Romans chapter 6, verse 6, knowing this, we're not guessing this, knowing this, we're not supposing this one, knowing this, we're not assuming this one, knowing this, we're not just wishing for this one, this is a fact, this is what we know, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, it has happened already. And then it says that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. Look at this, look at this, look at verse 12. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey each in the loss thereof. And look at verse 18. Being then made free from what? Being then made free from what? from sin he became the servants of righteousness verse 22 and now but now be made free from sin they have become the servants to god ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life the end of your journey will be everlasting life it should not be everlasting condemnation, everlasting toil, everlasting sorrow, everlasting tears, everlasting fire. The end of your journey will be everlasting life in Jesus' name. Because number one, there is freedom from sin. Number two, freedom from sickness. Freedom from sickness. You know, your, your, your personality, your, your threefold, your spirit, your soul, your body. Your spirit, you have soul, your body. And then the deliverance and the freedom the Lord has given you is also threefold. Number one, from sin. Number two, from sickness. Number three, from Satan. Look at this, from sickness. It tells us in Isaiah chapter 53. Isaiah chapter 53. I'm reading here from verse 4. Isaiah chapter 53. And we're looking at it from verse 4. Here is what he's telling us in the word, in this word that cannot be broken, that cannot be contradicted, that cannot be reversed. He says in verse 4, surely he has borne our griefs. You know, sometimes I, I like to put it personal, and you put it personal in your life. Surely he has borne my griefs and carried my sorrows. And uh, we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquities. And the chastisement of my peace was upon him. And tell me now, tell me now, tell me now. With his tribes, with his tribes, with his tribes, I am healed. I am healed. You are healed. We are healed in Jesus' name. Look at the fulfillment of that. There are some people that are quick to tell us, uh -huh, with the stripes we are healed. It's talking about spiritual healing. It's not talking about freedom from sickness. Let's come to Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 16. And when the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. And he cast out the spirits with his word and healed how many people? And healed how many people? And healed how many people? Are you there? Are you part of this? I'm telling you that you are so precious in his sight to a child of God and he healed all that was sick that it might be fulfilled. Let the theologians keep quiet. Let Matthew tell us. Let all those who misinterpret the Bible, let them keep quiet. Let the New Testament tell us what the Old Testament means. Because it said, with his times we are healed. And now the New Testament is going to tell us the interpretation and the fulfillment and the impartation that comes from that Isaiah chapter 53 that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet saying himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses first Peter chapter 2 
First Peter chapter 2, and we're reading from verse 24. First Peter chapter 2, we're looking at verse 24. It says, who is own self? This is not the work of an angel. Who is own self? This is not the work of Saint Augustine, Saint this and Saint that. Who is own self? This is not the work of a founder of any religion or the founder of any denomination who is own self. This is Jesus Christ. He came to set us free, free from sin and free from sickness. And that freedom is yours already today in Jesus' name. Who is own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree. That we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness. By whose stripes? By whose stripes? By whose stripes? You were healed. Why don't you make it personal now? Because before the cross, when we read it in Isaiah, we made it personal. And then Isaiah was looking forward at that time. Jesus will be born in Bethlehem. He will live his life in Nazareth and Capernaum and all those places. Then he'll go to the cross on Calvary. He will die. And Isaac saw him afar off. He said at that time, as if it had happened. Now it has really happened. I said now it has really happened. I said now it has really happened. And now that we personalized it at that time, now we're going to personalize this one in verse 24. Go with me now. Who is so self bear my sins in his own body? Let's look at that again. Who is so self bear my sins in his own body on the tree? Think about this. All the sins you ever committed in your life when you were young, when you were growing, when you were not wise, when you were whatever, when you were trying to be clever, everything rolled together. And Jesus said, give them to me. Give them to me. And all your sins, Jesus has taken everything away. No wonder you're free. I said, no wonder you're free. No wonder there's peace of God in your soul, in your spirit, who is so self bear my sins in his own body on the tree. That I, this is me. I said, this is me. I said, it is me. And that I, being dead to sin, should live unto righteousness by whose stripes I was healed. By whose stripes I was healed. By whose stripes? Before even that sickness came, your healing had been confirmed. Before you came this weekend, your healing had been confirmed. All we just need to do now is to remind you, look at Calvary, look at Christ, look at the cross, and all the sicknesses in your body, they are taken away in Jesus' name. Number three, freedom from Satan. Freedom from Satan. You know, something walking in the head and turning the head, something walking at the back, all that will stop before you leave this place. And then every day of your life, you are free from sin and free from sickness and free from Satan. In the morning, you are free. In the afternoon, you are free. In the night, you are free. In your dream, you are free. In the office, you are free. On the road, you are free. And when you get to the village, look around. In the village, you are free. In the city, you are free. You are free from sin. You are free from sickness. And you are free from Satan. And let's look at the word of God. We're looking at Luke chapter 10. I'm reading here from verse 17. Luke chapter 10, verse 17. Look at what he tells us. And the 17 returned again with joy. And the 70 returned again with joy. Now, if it said, and the 12 returned with joy, those will be the apostles. Those will be the apostles. This one now, they were not apostles. They were just disciples. They're just like you and like me. They're like every one of us. And it says, the 70 returned with joy. We returned with joy. As you go back home today, go back home with joy. As you return to your business, return with joy. The things that was a burden in your heart, heavy load on your heart, praise the Lord, is rolled away. The mountain that wanted to stop you from having the fullness of joy in your life, everything is taken away in Jesus' name. 
your concern over your husband, your concern over your wife, your concern over those precious dear children that give you heavy load on your heart. All that concern is solved in Jesus' name. And the Lord will perfect everything concerning your life in Jesus' name. That's the reason why as you brush all those uh, concerns and all those all the anxiety and all the worry and all the body you heart, uh, take everything away from your heart because freedom has now come to you. I said freedom has come to you and you return home with joy in Jesus' name. The return with joy saying, Lord, even the devils, even the evil spirits are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld who? I beheld who? When you turn to the right, Satan is defeated. You turn to the left, Satan is defeated. You move forward, Satan is defeated. You get your market, Satan is defeated. You get your office, Satan is defeated. I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. And behold, I give unto your power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing. And nothing, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. It is confirmed in Jesus' name. Notwithstanding, rejoice not because the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written where? Your names are written where? I said your names are written where? Well, look up here. You know, so, sometimes I, I hope you don't go to all these uh, other places. Oh, they, somebody come, just miss you on the street and says, come here. Well, I've never met you. You have never met me. I want to tell you something. They took your name and they took it to a particular place and they have written your name there and they just, you know, clamped on that name and they covered that name up and they say because of where they have taken your name to you that your star will never rise. I say that's a lie. I said that is a lie. Nobody can cut the name. Your name is not in a shrine. Your name is not in the river. Your name is not in the forest. Where is your name? I said, Where is your name? Everything that concerns you and concerns your name is already protected by heaven and in heaven and nothing will turn it around or reverse it in Jesus' name. Brighten up, brighten up, brighten up. And don't let all those lies, they put your name in a shrine, they recorded your name somewhere, they put your name in their register and they are putting incantation on your name. Which incantation can affect any name that is written in heaven? My name is up there. I said my name is up there. I said my name is up there. And nobody can hide your star or hide your destiny or hide your progress anymore in Jesus' name. Threefold freedom. Thank God I am free from sin. Say that. Thank God I'm free from sickness. Thank God I am free from Satan. First John chapter 5. First John chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 18. First John chapter 5. We're looking at verse 18. First John chapter 5. Verse 18. We know. We're not guessing this one. We know. We're not assuming this. We know. We're not just supposing. Maybe this one. We know. We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not, is free from sin. But he that is begotten of God keepeth himself and that wicked one. And that wicked one. And that wicked one toucheth me not. Toucheth me not. Say it for yourself will not touch you in jesus name point number two now triumphant triumphant freedom by the spirit of truth triumphant freedom by the spirit by the spirit this is not by local personal effort this is not by fleshly struggling this is not our it's a do or die business. I will do this. I will do this. I'm going to fight this sin. This one is by the spirit of truth. The spirit will take a preeminent place in your life in Jesus' name. 
and you will see that every day as you allow the spirit of god to have the final say the final authority in your life is the spirit it will open every door and any door that will bring trouble to you close every door that will bring affliction upon your life in jesus name this is the lord is now watching over your life he's taking peculiar interest in you particular interest in you and it's a perpetual interest it takes in you that anything that is going to hurt you the spirit of the living god is there and this freedom will be through the spirit of truth in jesus name in romans chapter 8 Romans chapter 8 in verse 1, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. The flesh, the flesh. Now the flesh, how does the flesh actually have, uh, you know, power, have authority, have dominion, have so much hold on us? The flesh here is represented by our senses, our five senses. What we see, what we hear, what we touch, how we feel, and then our mouth, what we say, mind, what we think. There's some people, they live all their lives with by all the things they hear, that's flesh. All the things they see, that's flesh. All the things they feel in their body, that's flesh. I'm feeling cold, that's flesh. I'm feeling hot, that's flesh. I'm feeling, uh, I don't know what's happening. I feel confused, that's flesh. But now it says we live by the Spirit. I'm listening to the Spirit. I'm looking at the Spirit. I allow the Spirit to walk in my life. I allow Him to do everything He needs to do. I'm walking after the Spirit. Look at verse 2. It says, for the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Give me a good amen. amen. Verse 9, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. It says you, you are not in the flesh, but you are in the spirit. Is that right? It says, if so be that the spirit of God dwell in you now, if any man have not, the spirit of Christ is none of his. And then you say, but if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. And if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you. Where is the Spirit of God? It dwells in you. I said, where is the Spirit of God? It dwells in you. Look at, look at His power. Look at His authority. Look at His ability. Look at all the possibilities of the Spirit of God in you. It says, if the Spirit of Him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by the spirit, by spirit that dwelleth in you. That body be quickened in Jesus' name. You know, it appears you are weak. You cannot take any other step. You don't see the pain over here, the tiredness over there. Your mind is not even wanting to carry any load anymore. Your mind doesn't want to reason, doesn't want to talk. And then there's no vision anymore. It's like I finish whatever I want to do. I think I'm so tired. All I need to do now is just, you know, close my eyes and then go to the other side. It's not yet happening. It will not happen. I said it's not happening because the spirit of truth, the spirit of power, the spirit of unction, the spirit of anointing will come inside you, energize you once again and quicken you once again and make you alive once again in Jesus' name. That's a long journey before you. Where you have never gone, you will go. What you have never done, you will do. What you have never seen, you will see. And what you have never even thought you will achieve, you are going to achieve in Jesus' name. There's a quickening power. There's an enthusiastic, there's a passionate power. There's something that, that makes you able to stir you up. As you go back home, it will show you new territories. It will show you new areas. Because this spirit of God that quickens you will make you alive. It will bring spring under your feet. You will run. You will not be tired. You will walk, you will not be weary. And there are great things you are still going to accomplish and do in Jesus' name. 
Look at verse 14. Verse 14, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. The Spirit of God from this time will be leading you. I said the Spirit of God from this time will be leading you. He never leads us into defeat. He never leads us into danger. He leads us out of danger, out of trial, out of trouble. And he leads us in the plain path that will make us achieve what we need to achieve in our lives in Jesus' name. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again. No bondage again in your life. Or the spirit of fear again to fear. But ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. That word Abba is Greek. It's in the Greek. It's in like Daddy, Papa, Papa, my Father. And you're so attached to the Lord, so associated with the Lord, so affectionate with the Lord. Say, Daddy, Father. It says the Spirit himself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children... And if children, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God, you inherit everything that God has in Jesus' name. You are forever with me, and all that I have, they are yours. And all things are ready for your claim, and for your benefit, and for your, uh, for your happiness from now on in Jesus' name. It says, if we belong to God, then we are heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him that we may also be glorified together you'll be glorified with the lord verse 26 it says likewise the spirit also helpeth our infirmities for we know not what we should pray for as we ought but the spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered the Spirit is living inside you, dwelling inside you. And the Spirit is also praying with you and praying for you, agonizing for you. Verse 27. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit. Because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. God. And then we come to verse 34. In verse 34 here is the, the privilege and the advantage and the profit and the result and the consequence of the indwelling of this spirit of truth within us. It makes us triumph. It makes us overcome. It makes us to become victors. It makes us more than conquerors. Verse 34. Who is he that condemneth it is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. He maketh intercession for us as a result of this spirit of truth dwelling in us, living in us, abiding in us. Look at what happens for 35. Who shall separate? Who shall separate? Make it personal. Tell me who shall separate me from the love of Christ. Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword as it is written. For I sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay. You know, it was like, it was going, the terry is a slippery ground. Once you begin to think of the negative, a slippery ground. Once you begin to think of darkness, of the power of the other side, persecution coming from the other side. They are, once you begin to think of the power of the enemy, the ability of the enemy, they are doing this, they are doing this, and doing this. Once you concentrate your mind on the news coming from the world, it's slippery. It's slippery ground. And you sleep into a dangerous ground. That's why he immediately said, nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. We are more than conquerors through him that loved us. I'm going to make it personal. Nay, in all these things, I am more than a conqueror through him that loved me. Nay, in all these things, I am more than a conqueror through him that loved me. Let me hear you say that. I am more than a conqueror. I am more than a conqueror. 
I am more than a conqueror through him that loved me. You'll experience that in your life in Jesus' name. Verse 38, for I am persuaded, for I am persuaded that neither death nor life, no angels, no principalities, no powers, no things present, no things to come, no height, no depths, nor any other creature shall be able to separate me from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus my Lord. Nothing will separate you in Jesus' name. The spirit of truth abiding in you. The spirit of truth dwelling in you. The spirit of truth energizing you. The spirit of truth supplying all your needs. John chapter 14. I'm looking at verse 17. John chapter 14. And we're looking at verse 17. It says in verse 17, it says, Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, Neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. He dwelleth with you, always by your side, paraclete, paraclete, supporter, counselor, helper. And he's always by your side, and then he will even transfer and come inside you. Chapter 15 of John. John chapter 15, verse 26. The spirit of truth. John chapter 15 verse 26. But when the comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the spirit of truth, which proceeded from the Father, he shall testify of me. He will not exalt Satan. He will not build up Satan. It will not make Satan mighty. It will minimize Satan and maximize the size, enlarge the posture of Christ in our lives. You know, some of these uh, people that call themselves deliverance ministers, and they say they have the Holy Ghost. Well, if you have the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost will not magnify Satan. The Holy Ghost will not magnify the spirit world. The Holy Ghost will not magnify all those the people of powers of darkness. The Holy Ghost will magnify Christ. And once he magnifies Christ, Satan will become so small, so minute, so minimized, it will not have any hold upon your life. But, you know, leave all those uh, people that do not know the truth. The Holy Ghost comes to dwell inside you. And when he dwells inside you, he will magnify the Lord Jesus Christ and testify of the Lord in your life and then you will have the power that sets you free, makes you free and keeps you free in Jesus name chapter 16 of John John chapter 16 I'm reading from verse 7 John chapter 16 reading from verse 7 nevertheless I tell you the truth if it is expedient for you that I go away, for if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment of sin because they believe not on me. Of righteousness because I go to my father and you see me no more judgment because the prince of this world is judged the prince of this world is condemned the prince of this world is paralyzed the same the prince of this world is made inactive inoperative in your life in Jesus name I have yet many things to say unto you but he cannot bear them now, how be it when he, the spirit of truth. You see, there are many things, people, the people of God, some of the baggage were had in the world before you became Christians. All those things, when the spirit of truth has come, he will wash everything away, drive everything away, and all the consequences of ignorance in your life, the Lord will stop them in your life in Jesus' name. How be it when the spirit of truth has come. He will guide you into all truth. He will guide you how? Tell me. Tell me again. 
you know there are people i don't know whether they read the bible at all i don't know what part of the bible they are reading they say they, they say no church has all the truth no church has all the truth that no matter where church you are going that that church will have this truth and then this other church will have this truth and this other church will have this other truth they say no matter how much of the holy ghost you have that the Lord will not allow any church to have the whole truth. Well, however, Paul the Apostle said, I have not shown to declare unto you the whole counsel of God, all the truth. And yet Jesus said that when the Holy Ghost comes into you, it dwells within you. The Spirit of truth will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He will show you in Jesus' name. First John chapter 4. First John, First John chapter 4. We're looking at it from verse 1. First John chapter 4, and I'm reading from verse 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit, small s, small s, all those spirits floating about, all those spirits that are moving the writers or write this and write that. Believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the spirit of God. We can know the spirit of God because the spirit of truth every spirit that confesses that jesus christ is come in the flesh is of god and every spirit that confesses not that jesus christ is come in the flesh is not of god and this is the spirit of the antichrist i pray that the spirit of the antichrist will not have any influence upon your life in jesus name whereof ye have heard that it shall come and even now already is it in the world ye are of god little children personalize that i am of god i said i am of god and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world greater is he that is in me greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world they are of the world in verse 5 therefore speak they of the world and the world heareth them we are of god he that knoweth god heareth us he that is not of god heareth us not hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error there's a spirit of truth there's a spirit of error i pray that that spirit of truth will walk in your life and make you completely free triumphantly free in jesus name number one the threefold freedom number two the triumphant freedom number three tell me number three the transformational freedom transformational freedom in the scripture of truth this, uh, this Bible is referred to as the scripture of truth, Daniel chapter 10. Daniel chapter 10. Daniel chapter 10, I'm reading from verse 21. The scripture of truth. The scripture of truth. I hope you never compare any other book with the Bible. In fact, you know what makes a cult? What makes a cult is when some people have a book and they put it side by side with the Bible. And then they believe that book more than they believe the Bible, the Word of God. There are some people that have what they call prayer books. Prayer books. God delivered us from that, you know, long ago when we left the Orthodox Church and we came to the evangelical church pentecostal church where we became born again we became sanctified we became filled with the holy ghost and now we don't have any prayer book we just pray as the spirit of god leads and directs but now some people have gone back to that old tradition and they have all these uh, deliverance uh, you know ministers as they call themselves if this is happening this is what to read if this is happening this is a prayer to read and now it's not the spirit of god and the spirit of truth guiding them 
them, interceding for them, empowering them, energizing them, how to pray. It is now what they read in that book. And unfortunately, it becomes an idol. And whatever they read in that book will cancel the little knowledge they have in the Bible. It's like the Bible is there, that book is there. The Bible is there, that book is there. And all the things the people of the world have said, you know, they were in the secret calls before, they made a covenant before, they did this before, they did that before, and now they put all these books down. If you're a real child of God, you want this power of freedom to walk unhindered in your life, uninterrupted in your life, when you get back home, burn those books, and the Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. Give me a good amen. amen. The scripture of truth that we cannot compare the word of God with any other book that somebody has written telling us about Satan, about evil spirit, about covenants and all that, about what to do, what not to do. The word of God is complete. This is the scripture of truth. Look at this in Daniel chapter 10 verse 21. Daniel chapter 10 verse 21. It tells us very pointedly and very clearly. And it calls this book the scripture of truth. It tells us verse 21, but I will show thee that which is noted in the scripture of truth. I will show thee that which is noted in the scripture of truth. And it is that which is noted in this scripture of truth. This is what brings dominion in your life. I said this is what brings dominion in your life. There's dominion as you keep to this book, keep to this word of God. There's dominion in your life in Jesus' name. You know, it just uh, reminds you of Joshua. This book of the Lord shall not depart out of your mouth. But you will read it, you will meditate on it day and night. And to observe, to do everything that is written there. For that is how you will have good success and your way will prosper. Your way will prosper in Jesus' name. Those two spies that went to spy out the land. They didn't come back from the, you know, the uh, inn or from the motel or whatever of Rahab and said, we brought this book back, Joshua. This is a book that will tell about all the stories and all the histories and all the covenants of the kings of Canaan. And then you read this one, you'll be able to have victory. Moses had given him already the book of the Lord, the word of God, the scripture of truth. And we're going to cover the land with the scripture of truth in Jesus' name. Any victory we want to have to penetrate and to go anywhere, everywhere in that land of promise, it is out of this book. Every place the soul of a foot shall tread upon, the Lord has given unto us. We're going to possess in Jesus' name. And we have dominion already. I want to personalize that. I have dominion already. I have dominion already. That dominion is yours already in Jesus' name. Judges chapter 5. Judges chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 13. Judges chapter 5. And we're looking at verse 13. Dominion, deliverance, authority, and your destiny is guaranteed by the word of the Lord in Jesus' name. Judges chapter 5, Judges chapter 5, verse 13. It tells us in verse 13, Then he made him that remaineth have dominion over the nobles among the people. Them that remaineth, thank God I remain. I say, thank God I remain. I came to the Lord. Some people that came to the Lord at the time I came to the Lord, some of them are not remaining, but thank God I remain. And thank God you remain. I said, thank God you remain. How many people do you know that came to know the Lord when you knew the Lord and now there are no more there? I'm happy you are there. I said, I'm happy you are there. You remain and because you remain, this dominion will be yours in Jesus' name. The Lord has made me have dominion over the mighty. You need to read, hear yourself reading that. The Lord has made me have dominion over the mighty. Can I hear you? Say that again. You have that dominion in Jesus' name. Chapter 18 of the Psalms. Psalm 18, I'm reading from verse 4. Psalm 18, I'm reading from verse 4. The sorrows of death compass me, 
and the floods of ungodly men made me afraid but don't stop there don't stop there look at verse 35 now don't stop in the negative never never stop in the negative anything you are thinking about don't stop in the negative anything you are discussing don't stop in the negative come over to this side verse 35 in verse 35 thou hast also given me the shield of thy salvation and thy right hand as holding me up and thy gentleness has made me great your mercy has made me great your compassion has made me great do you know that you are going to be great i said do you know you are going to be great verse 43 it says in verse 43 thou hast delivered me from the strivings of the people and thou hast made me the head of the heathen a people whom i have not known shall serve me where is the person there praise the lord it is done in jesus name it will be done in jesus name Isaiah chapter 49 verse 2 Isaiah chapter 49 Look at this in verse 2 In verse 2 it says And he has made my mouth like a sharp sword In the shadow, in the shadow of his hand As he hid me and made me a polished shaft And in his quiver he has hid me Your life is hid in Christ in Jesus name Look at, uh, look at John now, John, 1 John chapter 2 verse 14, 1 John chapter 2 verse 14, 1 John chapter 2 verse 14. I'm talking to some people here today, they are strong, they are mighty, and no power will be able to pull you down anymore in Jesus' name. First John chapter 2 verse 14 I've written unto you fathers because ye have known him that is from the beginning I have written unto you young men because ye are strong I've written to you young men because ye are strong how do you become strong we well, become strong and the word of God abideth in you and ye have overcome the wicked one ye have overcome the wicked one Anywhere you go, anywhere you turn, you'll overcome the wicked one in Jesus' name. Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12. I'm reading here now from verse 11. Revelation 12, 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. Overcomers, we overcome that Satan by the blood of the Lamb. You have overcome already in Jesus' name. And then it says, and by the word of their testimony, and they love not their lives, even unto the death. That means they are not afraid of anything anymore because of that victory they have got. Thank God as we came here this weekend, we have got that deliverance. Thank God as we came here this weekend, we have got that dominion. And the promises of God, the blessings of the Lord, the mighty hand of God will go with you everywhere you go in Jesus' name. But remember, it is because we abide, because we remain, because it says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, and He is my fortress. He is my God, in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth and the spirit of truth shall be your shield and your buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that wasteth in darkness, nor for the, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come near thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high thy habitation. There shall no evil befall you. Neither shall any plague, any affliction, any deformity, any infirmity come near your dwelling. 
he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways they shall bear thee up in their hands lest thou dash thy foot against a stone thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder the young lion and the dragon shall not trample under your feet because he has set his love upon me therefore will i deliver him i will deliver him i will set him on high you are not in the valley anymore you're on the top in jesus name because he has known my name he shall call upon me and i will answer him i will be with him in trouble i will deliver him i will honor him with long long life will i satisfy him cancer will not cut short your life HIV AIDS will not cut short your life. Accident will not cut short your life. Premature death will not cut short your life. Any cause, any bondage, any affliction will not cut short your life. There's a long life waiting for you. It has come in Jesus' name. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my deliverance, my salvation, my victory, and my dominion. It is yours already in Jesus' name. Why don't you tell the Lord, thank the Lord, and praise the Lord. I've got it. I've got it. I came here, deliverance is mine. I came here, power is mine. I came over here, authority is mine. I came over here, healing is mine. Health is mine. Joy is mine. Provision is mine. Dominion is mine. Everything is mine. You've got everything. You've got everything. You've got everything. You've got everything. Long life. Long life. Long life. Happy life. Happy life. You are excited about living. You are happy about living. And anything that will try to cut short that life, the Lord is going to strike it away from your life. In the day, remember long life. In the night, remember long life. Happy life. Joyful life protected life, preserved life, a fulfilled life, and all your dreams will be fulfilled, all your desires will be fulfilled, all your aspirations will be fulfilled, all those ambitions they are done, and you will be a victim, and you'll be a possessor. You are going to the promised land, and in that promised land, the Lord is sending you. You are going to reach there. Nothing will stop you before you get there. The protection of the Lord is there. Preservation of the Lord is there. The promotion of the Lord is there. The promises of the Lord are there, and they are all for you, and they are all for you, and they are all for you. It cannot fail. They cannot fail. You cannot fail. And the Almighty God will not fail in your life. You have everything. 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 You have victory over sin, victory over sickness, victory over Satan, victory over evil spirit, victory in all circumstances of life. Victory everywhere, freedom everywhere, deliverance, dominion everywhere. No sickness will cut short your life. No infirmity will cut short your life. No cause will cut short your life. No yoke will put you under bondage. Free and free indeed. Free and free completely. Free and free threefold freedom. Triumphant freedom, transformational freedom. You're free in your soul, you're free in your body, you're free in your spirit, you're free through and through. In Jesus' name we pray. If you know you're free, if you know you're delivered, if you know that this long life we are talking about, that the Almighty is talking about, nothing, nothing can take this life, long life away from you. In Jesus' name we pray. You will enjoy the work of your hand. Nobody will take you from your inheritance. 
everything the Lord has ordained for you, you are going to have, you are going to enjoy in Jesus' name. Any dream, any dream that said you will not make it is a lie. Any prophecy that said you will not make it is a lie. Any prophet that said you will not make it is a lie. Any deliverance uh, personality that says if you don't come to us, you are not going to make it, that's a lie. And we cancel all their lies from your life today in Jesus' name. Well, already you have everything. Let's confirm everything. Your life right now is going to load you with blessing. As you go, it loads your life. It loads your family. It loads your business. And from today, every day, every day, addition, addition, multiplication upon your life in Jesus' name. I said everything will be addition, multiplication from today in Jesus' name. It is happening. In Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this victorious weekend. We thank you for this triumphant weekend. We thank you because of this prayer answering weekend. We pray, O oh Lord, all the good things you have done, they remain permanent in every life in Jesus' name. I pray for all your children. I pray for all the people here, all the people who are hearing the sound of my voice. I pray that there's freedom, total freedom, threefold freedom, triumphant freedom, transformational freedom. Give to everyone in Jesus' name. And Lord, I pray sickness will not rule over you. You will rule over that sickness. Sin will not rule over you. You will rule over that sin. Satan will not rule over you. You will rule over that Satan. I pray that every good thing the Lord has promised you will be yes and amen in your life. In Jesus' name. Receive a new release of power. A new release of provision. A new release of potency. A new release of might. In Jesus' name. Let transformation come to your life right now. Those who are weak, oh Lord, strengthen them in Jesus' name. Those who are fearful, make them bold, make them courageous, make them fearless. In the places where they have failed before, as they go back there, they will succeed in Jesus' name. Every negative thing is cancelled away from your life. The mountains are gone. The hurdles are gone. The hindrances are gone. I release you into everything the Lord has promised you in Jesus' name. And finally, 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 long life. Long life. Long life. That everything the Lord created you for to see before you go home, you will see them in Jesus' name. All terminal diseases and all terminal whatever, I console them right now. Be free. Be free. Be free. And free indeed in Jesus' name. Lord, confirm it in every life. Confirm it in every life. Confirm it in every life. In Jesus' name I pray.